Well, good morning, everyone. You're all very welcome. I think I, by this time, I think I know most of you to know the retreats with us. And it's my privilege to, to welcome you all here to this very important Carson retreat. And it's certainly my privilege to welcome back Brother Thomas Paul to be with us here in Knock. He was with us f four years ago, I think. I did uh, two um, retreats, uh, three months in between. And so it's, it's great to have him back here. And um, for those of you that don't know uh, about his ministry, he is an engineer by profession. And uh, he was called by the Lord in uh, 1991, 1991 uh, to uh, work full time uh, for the kingdom of God. And he was called uh, while traveling on a train like Mother Teresa, and he immediately, he was uh, listening to recordings of, uh, of uh, Father Rufus very, Pereira. Father Rufus, a very world-renowned preacher, and uh, he had been following him for a while on his steps, but he immediately started to proclaim the Word of God. And uh, many people on the, on, on the train, uh, you know, were converted at, at that particular time. And then uh, he started his ministry in India and travelled all over India conducting um, retreats, especially priest retreats, and uh, for sisters as well, for the sisters of Mother Teresa's the sisters he ministered to on several occasions. And it was while at, uh, attending one or conducting one of these retreats in India a priest retreat, wasn't it, brother? Yes. Yeah, that the bishop told him that there was, it was the uh, burial place of um, a priest martyr, European, European pre priest missionary martyr. And a brother immediately wanted to be brought to the place of, of burial, so the bishop brought him. And a brother heard the voice of the missionary priest speak to him. Uh, should I fill yes. it? Yeah. Um, he said, where did you get your faith? And he said, brother said, uh, St. Thomas, obviously. And he said, also from missionary, European missionaries. So uh, the, uh, then he heard the voice of the, the missionary martyr uh, to, be, to call. He said, can you come to Europe and help my people? And brother immediately suggested that call too. And sometime after, uh, he, he also heard the voice of the Lord to open um, um, a Catholic um, a channel, a TV channel. And he called it 3LTV. He'll explain, brother will explain during the weekend uh, different, uh, um, you know, experiences and calls. But uh, then he, he, uh, he brought a team to to Europe. I think maybe Michael might have been one of his first. Yes. Uh, Michael here with us. You're very welcome, Michael. Michael has been um, accompanying uh, accompanying brother uh, since his um, since his arrival in in Europe. But uh, they they started right away to open many uh, Eucharistic um, adoration centres all over Europe. And Michael and Heidi. Heidi is Michael's wife. She's also brother's translator. And uh, they proceeded to open many, including in the brother will share the full story of of the encounter uh, with the Lord about opening one in Lisieux, in um, the Little Flowers Cathedral, which is still going on ever since. But um, then, at the beginning of COVID. I was uh, my first experience with brother was at a, a retreat in in Kildare. the Carmelites in Kildare, but there was two missionary priests sent there to to the, the Carmel to help them because they were it was in danger of closing, Father Manuel and Father Anthony, and they revived the whole place and it's it's up and running. And Father Manuel actually would have been instrumental in inviting fa uh, brother to do that week long retreat. In, in, in the, he, he would have been, he would have experienced Brother's teaching in the seminary. And he gave witness at, at that retreat that he was, 
that he learned a lot in the seminary, he said, but most of what he learned, and he, he was standing beside brother, and he said, most of what he learned was from this master. <laughs> so, uh, mm. um, so then that, that retreat, ever since I've been in touch with Brother Thomas Paul, but more than anything would be in the beginning of COVID, uh, the Lord inspired brother for to start on a li uh, live streaming um, study of the Catechism of the Catholic Church and also um, study, Bible study by the um, fathers of the church. It's called Katina Arroyo, which is um, the golden chain. And apart from the times that he has been on retreats and maybe other times maybe had to go back to India, he has not, he has not broken up, maybe days in between. Uh, uh, we're on the 1005, I think, episodes of the Catholic Catechism at the moment. Powerful, powerful studies. Uh, we're not hearing that anymore. And also the, uh, the study of Katina Roy by the Fathers of the Church as well. Total. Uh, but um, so, and then um, uh, he's uh, involved and lives in a um, world in a um, in Germany, in Germany, in a um, Eucharistic Adoration Center, which he was also instrumental in starting a, a perpetual adoration there 14 years ago. It was up and running at the time, wasn't it, brother? And then you, you he started, and it's been going ever since. Powerful, powerful. During the week, I will share with you uh, about this place in Germany, in Wuerl. Yeah, it's, it's about in, an hour and a half from near Cologne. Cologne. Yeah, Cologne. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I had the privilege of. Uh, been there uh, three times in the last two months by the grace of God and I experienced it's just there's lights going out all over Europe from that place it's amazing uh, the custodians Carl and and, uh, and Elizabeth uh, they're living the gospel uh, and they're feeding the poor and uh, housing um, the homeless and doing God's work so I think if I was to go on anymore, I'd be here all day. So now, if, and uh, then we got the inspiration to start uh, carry some retreats and uh, oh yes, yeah, and uh, and a workshop on prophecy. Yes, in in this center in in world, and myself and um, and Eva would have been the first over there, and then uh, brother got the inspiration then to to have a, a charism retreat. Uh, our uh, workshops in Ireland. Are, um, um, in Ireland as well. So hopefully that it will be in Ireland every two months and in Germany every two yeah. months. Yeah. And then in the midst of all that, uh, we heard about the uh, Travellers Programme. It was uh, opened by the Archbishop uh, Aldo in, Me in Medjugorje. And we were all already uh, um, in, in um, new... Um, Edward Stokes, uh, who is he was the co he's the coordinator out there. He was appointed by the bishop for to be the coordinator for program for travellers. It's under the banner of the Queen of the Travellers, isn't it? So, brother um, ministered to the travellers there last month as well for a whole week, and um, coming uh, he met uh, when he was there. He met with Marina, who is the um, uh, owner of the Divine Mercy. Um, uh, shrine uh, or uh, tours out there. Center. She brings them out to the centre there, and he met her. By God's grace, we just were passing by, and uh, Edward introduced brother. And within a half an hour, they had uh, arranged the program for to go to minister to to the Croatian people. Uh, so there's a po we'll, be, we'll be sending that poster. So he'll be ministering um, um, uh, family tree, isn't it? Family tree healing. <laughs> Yeah. So next month. So I think <coughs> that, so it'll be in, in Medjugorje every two months, and in Germany every two months, and in Ireland every two months. Is it? <laughs> Please Is God. It? Yeah. So uh, I think that's it, brother. Is it? Yes. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, well, my personally um, met brother at that retreat in Kildare eight years ago, and it changed my whole life. So um, I'm sure that that will change all your lives as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us together sing a small hymn of Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. 
As we begin, let us also listen to the planning of today's up to lunch time. You say that? Well, first of all, I just wanted to tell you about the system here. There's three toilets, one beside the, the oratory, and there's one here. And there's one uh, out here, uh, we're recommending if the men go to it. I don't there's one here, sadly, and, and yeah. the two guys. So, um, uh, other than that, you, you announced uh, no, uh, it. Uh, yeah. For our retreat, the purpose we kept it in uh, knock is also to make this a uh, opportunity for a pilgrim, pilgrimage in the shrine to participate in the program of the holy celebrations in the shrine. Mm. So every day we go for the holy mass in the shrine and we spend time in prayer with the taking the intercession of Blessed Mother. So today, at 12 o'clock, we participate the celebration in the shrine. In Basilica, I think, is that right? Basilica. Yeah. And thereafter, you can go for lunch, and we come back at 2.30. Okay? okay? Yeah. Is it all right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's our planning. Yeah. Then we think after that, Yes. When we come back, <laughs> yeah, the Lord the lead, okay. and and brother also kind of the same in Medjugorje. He said it was important for us to take part in the pilgrimage part of of Medjugorje, sure. so yeah. he didn't interfere with any of the so evening, he, and we went to, to mass. That is the purpose of our it. coming to yeah. the Marian yeah. pilgrimage shrines. Yeah. So, thank you, Peggy. Okay. Thank you. So Peggy was a very strong. Inspirator to me to put me here many times. Praise God, it's our privilege. Very good. good. And uh, she's younger and younger, <laughs> 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 making tirelessly running here. She, she said in these two months she visited uh, three times to Germany and Most one time to Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank That's you, brother. Good. Thank you. All so, for listening. whenever you feel tired, Look at Peggy <laughs> and look at Pope Francis. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, Now you can, uh, can you just move this? Yeah. Sorry, Michael. Yeah, you just, just move it. You know, uh, we are recording all these, all these uh, videos we are recording so that many people and watch it in the YouTube all over the world and be benefited. So that is the way of the Lord in the modern time. Yes, so now we begin. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. So as we are in the in the pilgrim place of Nock of where Mother Mary's apparition took place and so it's very much connected with our theme workshop on charism. So we know the first workshop on charism or the charisms sprout out 
at the time in the in the cenacle where Mary was praying with all the apostles continuously. So we can see the last word of Luke's gospel. The last word of the Luke's gospel was this: that they were continuously praising God in the upper room, naturally along with Mary. And then the Holy Spirit came upon them. And what was the first thing happened when the Holy Spirit came upon them? There was fire. There was manifestation of the Holy Spirit. There was gifts of the Holy Spirit. Prophecy. Speaking in tongues. Visions. And that is how the church began. So the beginning of the church was on the day of Pentecost, led by Mary, praying together with them. So what probably these nine days in the upper room, Mary was doing with the apostles. We know at that time, Mary was the only person who was so familiar with the Holy Spirit than anybody else. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Because from the very moment of her life, or rather before her life began, she was filled with the Holy Spirit through the Immaculate Conception. So that is to be understood from the teaching of the Church that she was saved and she was protected from the original sin before she conceived in her mother's womb. So, so much familiarity she has with the Holy Spirit, in the work of the Holy Spirit. So, even in our credo, when we say, I believe in Jesus Christ, we cannot say it without referring to Holy Spirit. <laughs> Correct? Mm -hmm. Before we come to the third part of the credo, I believe in Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That is officially, we yeah. say, I believe in Holy Spirit. But before that, even when we say, I believe in Jesus Christ, we have to say, He was, he, who was conceived through the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit and born through Virgin Mary. Yeah. So this is very important for us to understand <coughs> the role of Mary and Holy Spirit right in the work of the Incarnation itself. So Mary's help was with apostles in the understanding and learning about Holy Spirit. So John Paul II, see here we have the statue of John Paul II and incidentally today is a feast of John 23rd. And, uh, okay, I say about it later. So, John Paul II said, in one of his teaching, in all the Old Testament prophecies, prophets were speaking, Holy Spirit come upon man. He the Spirit of the Lord will come upon him. No prophecy said about her or a woman. Correct? Mm -hmm. But John Paul to say, but in reality, in the New Testament, according to Matthew's Gospel and Luke's Gospel, the Holy Spirit came upon the woman first. And Our Lady, who was the moment when the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, You will conceive. Okay. But I do not know a man. So, for our modern thinking, we say, I do not know a person. But then the angel said, Holy Spirit will come upon you. So Pope John Paul II says that makes very evident to Mary 
the person, according to Luke's gospel, it is written, I do not know a man. And angels say, I know a man. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will come upon you. But we never say Holy Spirit has a gentle nature. The Holy Spirit is God. So as God, God is common factor of both the gents. There is no female or male for God. But nevertheless, when we say Holy Spirit, we say He. But Holy Spirit is a person. That's what we have to understand first. So John Paul II said, at that moment when Mary, when the angel said, Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will conceive. To Mary, it was very clear, Holy Spirit is a person through which she will conceive and a child will be born who will be son of God. Who will. So this aspect is a very important aspect for our charism or for our experience of the Holy Spirit. People, we know many people say Holy Spirit is power, Holy Spirit is fire, Holy Spirit is everything, so many symbols. But more than all that we must know Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, third divine person, consubstantial with the Father and the Son, equal to Father and the Son. But when we think about the hierarchy, Father, God is first, the Son is second, we say third, Holy Spirit. But that does not mean that He is inferior than Father and the Son. But we say in hierarchy, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. First, second, third. Like Pope Francis says, all of us have received one baptism. The same baptism, all the saints received the same baptism. Pope also received the same baptism we all received. So baptism, there is no change, no, no difference. But but in hierarchy, one person is a pope because of the duty God has given. Another person is a cardinal, another person is a bishop, another person is a priest or religious. That is God's call. Understand? But Holy Spirit is in us through baptism, imparting the same anointing what Jesus has. Jesus has threefold anointing. The Jesus has the anointing, please, Sorry. of the priest, priestly, kingly, and prophetic anointing. So in Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1268, it's their teaching about the baptism. See, the baptized have become living stones to be built into a spiritual house to be holy priesthood. <clears throat> Very important point now, I'm ready. By baptism, they share in the priesthood of Christ, in his prophetic and royal mission. They are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. Who? 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 Priests? Bishops? All of us. All of us. Do you recognize it? <laughs> what? Me? A royal priesthood? Holy nation? That's the point. This is where we are, we need to grow. We need to recognize the dignity of a Christian life, what we already possess. 
<laughs> Up to the age of 40 or so, 30 to 38, I was living as a good Christian. I was going for holy baths, I was going, doing everyday prayer, everything. But I never realized I have the same anointing of Christ. <laughs> And as a layman, I am a layman, I am a family man, I have wife and children and grandchildren. My first grandchild is 18 years old. <laughs> so, but as a layman, as a lay person, all of us has this threefold anointing. Priestly, kingly, prophetic anointing. So all this I am speaking is from the teaching of the church, catechism of the Catholic Church. This is something, now you see the way this book looks like, you can understand how much I am using this book. <laughs> and, okay, now I don't read a lot from this because then we will not have time for our program. <laughs> so, Coming to our, yeah, coming to St. John Paul II, I said I will tell something later. Because of the feast of Pope John XXIII, John XXIII became Pope in 1958, 58. And in 59, within one year, he got an inspiration to call a ecumenical council, Vatican Council. That made the whole church completely different. Coming to the point of Holy Spirit, it was the work, it was the greatest work of the Holy Spirit in 2000 years of the church history. And This is the Pope, after declaring about the Council, by the by, why today is his feast? This is not his day of death. Today is 11th of October. It is, the, it is considered feast because it is on 11th of October 1962 the Vatican Council began the inauguration of Vatican Council. It was so phenomenal with the life of John Paul, John 23rd, that is why today is the feast of John 23rd. My point why I am uh, interested to connect with John Paul II is very interesting point. So then in 1963, before the Council end, John 23rd died and Pope Paul VI was chosen. And then, uh, maybe in 1967, Paul VI died. And then, the next Pope was Cardinal Luciani. <coughs> he said, I cannot do anything other than what John and Paul did. I will continue the work of John 23rd and Paul. Therefore, I want to take a double name, John Paul. That is how the name John Paul came to existence. So he was John Paul I, but he lived only 33 days. 33 days he was called back home. And then came the great Pope, Carol Paitiva. He said, I also cannot think about anything else other than continuing what John 23rd and Paul the sixth did. So I too will take the name, double name, John Paul the second. So today as we 
celebrate the feast of Saint John 23rd, we must understand from this John 23rd in the church a new era began. John, John, Paul, Paul continued what John, John Paul one, John Paul two, and we know Cardinal Ratzinger was like, uh, like a right hand of John Paul, so he continued exactly what they continued in this. So, anyway, another point I want to say relating to John twenty third is. One of his encyclical, which even if we don't read the whole thing, the very name of the encyclical is very phenomenal. That is called Matter et Magistra. Matter et Magistra means mother and teacher. He is the one who developed such a beautiful understanding. Church is a mother and teacher. We all received birth from the church as a Christian, as a Catholic, but that is not enough. Like a mother feed the child, we also must be nourished and nursed by the mother church. Then only we will really experience Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit. So St. Augustine is another great church father who says, if you want to experience the Holy Spirit in a profound way, you must love the church. Because church is the, or the, the Holy Spirit is the soul of the church. Jesus is the head of the church. We are the body of the church. Okay? Head and body. Is it enough? We are the body. Jesus is the head. So, what else is needed for a, for a movement? Life. Soul. Soul. So, Holy Spirit is the soul of the church. Now, all these things I am telling for a Catholic understanding of the working of the Holy Spirit. And from my life in the renewal, in the work of the Lord, the very first time I read the first en uh, uh, one of the encyclicals of John Paul II was on Holy Spirit. The name of the encyclical is Vi Dominum et Vivificando. Dominum et vivificando. You can write it down. This is the greatest and strongest encyclical of the great Pope John Paul II. He has written 14 encyclical encyclicals and many more, many numbers of apostolic teaching. Out of these 14 encyclicals, all the scholars said, the encyclical and Holy Spirit is the most strongest encyclical. Okay. Now, coming to the point of Canism. Where's the time now? <laughs> I'm sorry. So, we will, we will stop around 11.30 so that you can go for Holy So, somebody should... Not, not notice me the time <laughs> if I am going out of control. <laughs> this uh, program is uh, actually a program not so much of teaching, but we need a little teaching in the beginning. After that, I will lead you or the I will I will help you how the Holy Spirit himself will lead you so the uh, and then the the workshop means the Holy Spirit will familiarize you how the charisms already in you comes up so it's completely a different program 
So I am now giving little introduction to bring you into the theme and a little bit introduction. Then we actually need a group. We have to we have to get into groups for three, four people's group. Each group then pray to Holy Spirit. I will lead you. Mm. And then you will feel Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Holy Spirit is showing you vision. Holy Spirit is manifesting in you. It is a real, real, real fact. And once you experience it, then only Christian life has a real meaning. <laughs> we talk about Holy Spirit, we sing about Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit is a person, right, living in you, in you, like he was living in Mother Mary, like he was living in all the saints, like he was living in Jesus himself. And that I experienced and I, I was asked by the Lord, you make it, others also experience then only the church will become strong. Okay, now we see in the apostles, how all the apostles were called by Jesus. Let us, I take Matthew and uh, Matthew first. Matthew's Gospel chapter 10. In Matthew's Gospel chapter 10, mission of the twelve. Then he summoned his twelve disciples. See, he summoned, he called them. He did not send them to the priest seminary <laughs> or any formation training. He gave them all power and authority and charisms. See this. He gave them authority over unclean spirit to dry them out and cure every diseases and every illness. See, these disciples were fishermen. You know, they were fishermen. They had no training. They had no formation. They never knew what is kingdom of God. He called them he gave them, he sent them. Go and proclaim. And very interesting in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 7 and 8 says, he says, as you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of God is at hand. Proclaim the kingdom of God. And then, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, drive out demons. <laughs> Shall we all shout out this? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out it. I could imagine these 12 of them were so excited. Heal the sick and they were going out. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Heal the sick, raise the dead, turn the leper, cast out demons. Heal the sick, raise <laughs> Oh, is it written like this? Oh, I never noticed that. <laughs> that was my... Is this written? These fishermen, he gave them authority. For what? To raise the dead. Can you imagine this? It is not story. It is truth. Amen. I am sure we have to have such thing work now in this century, in this time. Why not? Is it not the same Holy Spirit? Is it not the same Lord? Is it not the same Spirit? But we think, oh, not for me. That's a problem. Oh, I am an ordinary layman. I am a very poor person. I am a sinner. I am, I am not for me. We have, we have so much of inferiority complex. That's a problem. We never recognize these gifts are, at least these can work. So if you see the history of the church, 
several centuries, many people were doing this. It was happening. So why the church is not powerful? Church is the people of God. If the people of God, oh, this is not for me. I can go for every day, Holy Mass. I can pray one rosary and I can pray a prayer before meal. That is enough to be a Christian. This is the present situation. He says, I am a Christian. I go for Sunday Mass. I go whenever I get time, again the weekdays. I pray rosary, I pray prayer before meals. That is a Christian. We never recognize a, as a Christian we are another Christ. As a Christian the work, all this authority what Jesus has given is in us. <laughs> Impossible. I mean it is unimaginable. When I got these inspirations and power and the Lord started telling me do this, do this. I also was, oh no, I am a layman. I should not do it. It's only for some priest and religious. Uh, I, no, I say you do it. Once it so happened, a sister, a religious sister whose leg had some problem, she was limping, limping, not able to walk. The Lord told me, you command the bones of this sister and it will along it and her leg will become straight oh my god me yes i am telling you you do it <laughs> i could not believe it in the beginning but then i told that sister sister the lord is telling you today you will be healed Oh no, Thomas, I am 40 years like this. I will live like this. It's a suffering given to me. So it happened in India, but the sister is a, uh, a sister from Austria. Now we have a gentleman, I mean, he's a priest candidate from Austria. We have Michael from Germany. We are international group. This sister from Austria working in India, 40 years limping, limping, limping with a crippled leg. The Lord said, I want to heal her. When I said to sister, no, 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 no. I will live like this. I said, the Lord is now telling, he will elongate your leg and both your leg will become same. What? Oh, Thomas, I can't believe it. Help my unbelief. And then, I said, uh, my, she said, is my leg is short? My, I have pain in my right leg. Yes, the Lord is telling your right leg actually has no problem. Your left leg is short by a few inches. Therefore, the whole body is weight coming on the longer leg. So it is painful. What? I have been showing this to the doctor, but no doctor realized this. That's the problem. Now here we have another doctor who is telling the leg you have been treating has no problem. Problem is on your left leg, which is short. But no. Okay, now. Oh, Thomas, how do I know? It's very simple. You just sit down, put your back on the wall and stretch your leg. You will know which leg is longer or shorter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an idea. So she, yes, you have to sit on the ground. Put your leg flat with the ground. Put back strongly, press on the wall and you stretch. Then she saw one leg is short. By the time the Lord started saying, Now you say to this bone to along it. <laughs> Already I have was filled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I said, 
Now the Lord is commanding, now be careful. And already she started feeling pain, pain on the leg. Why? The leg started elongating. And then I said, in the name of Jesus, I command these bones to along it. I could feel, you know, you can imagine the bone along it. I could feel. Imagine that sensation. How God is working, how we can experience it, that her leg is elongating and like it is growing, 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 growing. And when it came, both same, the Lord said, now say to stop. So I said, in the name of Jesus, stop. And it stopped. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't say I am a miracle worker. Don't think like that. I am only a believer. And Jesus said in Mark's gospel, a believer has this sign. Mm -hmm. They will lay hands over the sick and the sick will be healed. As a believer, you eat his body, you drink his blood, you are filled with his Holy Spirit. So you are another Christ. We are another Christ. And Jesus said, all what I did, you also will do. So this is the basic teaching on the charism. So he called the apostles, <laughs> he gave them power. Cure the sick, raise the dead. Cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Look at that. It is not a story. It is the word of God spoken by Jesus himself. Amen. When Jesus speak, it is like, let there be light. There was light. Let the tree and the plants produce fruits. He started producing fruits. The same thing, you heal the sick, you will. Not because of us, because he said it. He is doing it through us. So, the apostles, they, he summoned them, <laughs> they were fishermen, they don't know anything. He gave them power and authority. That's the point we have to draw. He gave them power and authority to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the leper, to cast out demons and to proclaim. So gift of proclamation is always associated with manifestation of sickness and healing, etc. Now as I said, this itself, somebody is getting healing. Those who will be watching this in YouTube, or those who are already here now, let us say, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We believe, Lord. We believe this. We believe this, Lord. Now the Holy Spirit is revealing to me, somebody has a tooth pain. It's a small thing, but it is a sign. Somebody has a severe tooth pain. The Lord is healing that. Maybe somebody here or somebody who will be watching this in the YouTube, it happens. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody here has a tooth pain? Mm -hmm. Tooth pain? Tooth pain? No. Okay, then somebody later. So, when we preach the gospel, such healings are always taking place. Always. Every day when I announce this, next day or another day I immediately get a message. It was me, I was having severe tooth pain. When I heard this, suddenly it disappeared. Amen. Amen. So <laughs> these manifestations called charisms. Now Matthew's gospel, beginning of the call of apostles, we understood. Now go to Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9, he summoned the twelve. He summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. See, what is the problem in our country? 
there are so many people are possessed or doing so many evil things uh, but nobody is able to help them because we are not commanding the evil to live in today's gospel jesus <laughs> was talking about the deliverance and jesus said if through the finger of god they'll come welcome if i cast out demons with the finger of god the kingdom of god has come see the whole humanity because of the original sin and the work work of the evil is in another way of life jesus has come to change that so we or the uh, ministry those who have the gift of holy spirit can understand the working of the devil the evil maybe alcoholism drug addictions these are something we can speak there are so many other evil things we cannot even speak you know what i mean <laughs> but all these things can be expelled through the power of the holy spirit Amen. that is the finger of god in today's gospel chapter 11 of uh, luke chapter 11 today's gospel that you will be reading you will be hearing that uh today's so he was drawing out a demon luke chapter 11 14 onwards and in word with 20 11 20 says but if it is by the finger of god that i drive out demons then the kingdom has come upon you so so many people are there but there are lot of possessions so many evil spirits so we generally think oh, no 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 it is only for priests who can drive out demons but jesus said in mark in in mark's gospel you know this it's also you must understand among the four gospel writers who are the gospel writers matthew mark luke john have you ever thought about who are these four people matthew and john are apostles so they are in priestly ministry but mark and luke were ordinary lay people like us <coughs> the church fathers who interpret the gospel they write even at the time of even in the gospels writing god <coughs> made a equal responsibility for the lay people along with the apostles and mark <coughs> later on became at the end of his uh, later stage he was appointed as a bishop but luke remained always a layman he is the one who contributed maximum more than any gospel writer because Luke's writing is Luke's gospel as well as Acts of Apostle. Layman, do you believe this? How important <coughs> God consider lay people. Hmm? <laughs> Are you proud of it? Mm-hmm. See, we have to recognize it for the work glory of God. we the lord god consider all the lay people in such a high esteem now why pope francis specially called the synodal way <laughs> the synodal way is pope francis want to say the church is not only 
by the bishops or the priests. It's not an organization dominated by the bishop or priest. No. It is a church of the people of God. The bishop and the priest should take them with them, synodal way. Go with them. Discuss with them. Listen to them. Use them. You know, I was preaching to many dioceses. So a priest retreat is a very important program in a diocese. It is planned more than a year in advance. And all the priests must compulsory must attend this. They must not say, oh, we cannot do. They have to. They have to. Annual retreat of priests. And even the bishop. So in that diocese, uh, there were 300 priests, so they divide into three programs. One hundred priests, another one, like that, three part of the retreat. So one of that was, in that year, was preached by a layman, like Thomas Paul. So they can choose which retreat you want to go. You have to go for a Thomas Paul's retreat or another very... Uh, freedom. So in my <laughs> group, the bishop and all the responsible persons of the presbytery was there. Maybe they want to know what this uh, layman is preaching. Morning to evening I was preaching. See, generally the other priests would teach, they give morning one talk then they will say, now you reflect, reflect. And, but for me, it is not like that. I keep on preaching. <laughs> <laughs> and at the last day, when the retreat was over, all were filled with so anointing Holy Spirit. And the bishop himself came on the stage to express a thanksgiving. And he said, my dear brother priests, we have been listening to this layman full day, five days. We never sat for more than 45 minutes to listen to someone. But we have been listening to this man full day and we never felt tired. And we never felt any wrong thing in this. All what he taught he was speaking was theologically sound and based on the teaching. Now my question is, the bishop still it was a shock for me also. I mean, it was very interesting. My question is, my brother priests, he's the bishop and all the parish priests are there. Why can't you train in your parish one layman like Thomas Paul? <laughs> See, we normally pray for vocation, for priest and religious. We never pray for one layman who must be having all the, in this way. I said this for that purpose. Because at that time, I too really recognized the need of the development of the lay people, not only priests and religious. See, priests and religious are called to celebrate the Holy Mass for the confession or the sacramental ministries. But there are so many ministries like preaching the gospel, praying, intercession, so many things every lay person can do. So even the gospel writing is done by the lay person. So at the end of the Mark Gospel, it is written, every believer has a sign. They lay hands over the sick and the sick will be healed. They cast out demons. It is given to them. Okay, now coming to again Luke chapter 9, words 1, 2, 3 says, he summoned the twelve 
and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases and he sent them to proclaim he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of god he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of god and to heal the sick he said to them take nothing okay so that is more further instructions but these three lines for me was a very uh, very beautiful conviction he called them he sent them but he did not send them empty hand he gave them authority power charisms suppose you call a carpenter to make a table or something in your home to do some work carpentry what do you expect him to bring tools if you don't have tools he cannot do this work so we are called 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 call of a christian is not simply for going for holy mass or praying no to do work for the kingdom of god this is a month of the mission we will be having mission sunday oh, what we do in mission sunday in the church there will be a poster written by a mission some poor people asking for money and we contribute some money for mission okay that is a very simple thing you can do for mission what is mission you must be ready to go go mission means go but not empty handed the lord is not so full to send us like a carpenter without tools he send us a carpenter with modern power tools <laughs> our carpenters of present time is not like earlier time he comes with such modern tools sometimes a carpenter come with a big van in that van he has so many techniques he comes in and he says what is the work oh, okay okay now i come and he bring a, such a power song and all the machines and ta 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 and by evening so quickly he finish the work come on give me money <laughs> <laughs> and they are trained they so if you have got a power tool you have to know how to use it they are not toys they are tools so this is what we have to understand charisms are tools for evangelization yeah welcome welcome charisms are tools for evangelization they are not toys suppose yes please come in when you are at home your grandchild you saw your grandchild is playing with a sharp knife and immediately you will quietly go and hi baby wait a minute remove this knife and keep it away <laughs> very because if you are making some noise this child is playing little bit fun with the knife and it can hurt the child quietly remove it and keep it say this is not a toy my child this is sharp knife don't play with this it can harm you hmm? hmm the child don't understand but we have to understand we should not okay so the point jesus also want to teach us here is charisms are powerful tools we all need to be trained in that how to use it that is one of our main point now coming to the um, training part of it is in the acts of apostle that is acts 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 who's acts acts of holy spirit 
Some of the Bible scholars will say Acts of Apostle is actually Acts of Holy Spirit. So we can see a model how the mission began, how the church began. And the greatest <laughs> trainer is St. Paul. So St. Paul in in 1 Corinthians, oh, oh, another 15 minutes more. St. <coughs> Paul in his teaching, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now we are exactly coming to the teaching about charisms. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The first sentence, so this chapter, chapter 12, 13, 14, these three chapters are on charisms. And the first sentence of chapter 12 must be understood with the more <laughs> detail. He says, now, in regard to spiritual gifts, so charisms are known as spiritual gifts spiritual gifts. Brothers, I do not want you to be unaware. I do not want you to be unaware. So another way, my dear brothers, I want you to be aware about the spiritual gifts. When we read, we read it like that. But it, it, it is, this awareness is a learning. These spiritual gifts are very powerful tools. If you don't know how to use it, you should not use it. <laughs> if you want to use it, you should be aware. So, so when he say, I do not want you to be unaware. Now I give you this camera. Ah, thank you. But then, for, then immediately you ask, how to use it? <laughs> so we may have these days a lot of modern equipments. Even a telephone, you may get it. But we don't know how to use it. And you give to our child. He will immediately download the, <laughs> what he will download? He will download the most unwanted things. <laughs> and he started playing. He started taking a photograph of us and showing a crocodile, a, 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 some, what is it called? Mask. Mask. He will fix a mask. And, oh, Grandma, look here, your face is like this. Hey, what have you done? How you made my face like this? And they do so many techniques. How you did it? With your phone. Oh, my phone has all these techniques. <laughs> we don't understand, but these children, they immediately, whenever they get the phone, they immediately take it away and they download all the... Uh, things and making, playing. But we are amazed how this child... So the reason is they know what... So charisms are... So when St. Paul said this word, word 12.1, my dear brothers, I do not want you to be unaware. Why is such an expression? You have many charisms. But you must be aware about it. Now, the f most important point uh, in this word is, first of all, pay special attention, you must be aware what exact special charism you have. God has given several charisms to everybody, but everybody there are distinct charisms, different charisms. 
One person may have a powerful gift of healing. Another person has a powerful gift of prophecy. Different charisms. So you must first of all must aware what exact gift you have. Understand? Yes. That's the point. Second thing, how to use that gift? <laughs> how to, how to, do, how that we don't make a mistake by using that gift? Like a very practical uh, <laughs> story. Once when I was in a place, somebody told me, uh, Thomas Paul, please pray for me. I have two fishing boats. That is not working. Please pray and find out what is the reason. <laughs> then I said, I'm very sorry. These are spiritual gifts. These are to be used only for spiritual matters. That's the first thing. We have these gifts of vision. We can see a vision when we pray. That does not mean that you can use that gift for anything. These are spiritual gifts. In, it's written here in 1 Corinthians 14. 14.26 says, Spiritual gifts are for spiritual reasons. 14.26 So what is to be done by this? When you assemble, one has a psalm, another an instruction, a revelation. That is the vision, a revelation. A tongue, gift of tongue. Or an interpretation. <coughs> Everything should be used for building up. When it is written building up, means it is for spiritual building up. So I told this man, I am very sorry, I cannot use the carry sums to find out your fishing boat is working or not, what is the mistake of the fishing boat. Then he said, why you say that uh, a person like you gave me a message that God, he see vision of two fishing boat. So you buy this fishing boat. That is how I bought the fishing boat. Oh my God. I said that is wrong. No, he was like you, a man with uh, charisms. He saw a vision. And according to the vision, he said this to me. Yeah, this is what I said. Getting a vision is not enough. We must know from the Holy Spirit an interpretation of the vision. He's, he might have seen a vision of two fishing boats. When he prayed for you, he saw two boats. Yes, 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 he saw two boats. He said, I am seeing two boats. But that does not mean that you have to buy two boats. <laughs> so this is where St. Paul says, I do not want you to be unaware. I want you to learn how to use these gifts. So I told them, every gift, every vision must be interpreted and a discernment. Discernment is required. If you say he really saw a vision of two boats, I can ask the Holy Spirit to Give us an interpretation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please, 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 please ask the Holy Spirit to interpret this. Okay, now you sit down. Let us pray. I said, okay, oh Holy Spirit, this man is suffering because somebody gave him this message. He gave them a message of two fishing boat. But what is the interpretation? Please interpret. Then immediately Holy Spirit gave me a interpretation. Holy Spirit gave me interpretation was this man has put his both the foot in two boats. 
You understand? Mm -hmm. This man has put his foot in two boats. Mm -hmm. That means, so when I said this, he immediately said, yes, yes, that is right. What means that? He, the Holy Spirit says, this man has put his two foot in two boats. That means, he says, yeah, yeah, because I am a prayer group leader here in my locality, but I have a foreign liquor shop. I sell foreign liquor in another, another city. Do you understand? Foreign liquor... Yeah. In your country, foreign liquor selling may not be, uh, it may be a very good thing. <laughs> but in some places, when we, a prayer group leader, he is leading the people to be holy without drinking alcohol, without doing nonsense, no, without uh, doing such nonsense with uh, drinking and all these things he is teaching. On the other side, he is having a shop to sell the foreign liquor. That is the two boats. Mm. Understand? Yeah. Two boats. And he immediately recognized it. That means two years back, the Lord told you to stop that evil thing, what you are doing. Instead, <laughs> the vision was wrongly understood. You bought two fishing boats. And it is not working even after two years and so much money is uh, on mortgage, he is not able to get it. So imagine how big mistake is happening. So if we don't you learn how to use the catechisms in a proper way, it can end up into big mistakes which can cause various uh, problems, various problems. So I am not frightening you <laughs> by doing this. I am cautioning you and the problem is when it happened, we cannot help them to correct it. Because all what has happened is happened. Uh, two years, so much money he wasted, so much time he wasted, so many damages happened. Okay, so when St. Paul says, I want you to be aware about the spiritual gifts means two aspects. First aspect is you must know what special gifts God has given to you. And that is what we are going to do in this program today itself. Today itself by evening you will know what special gift Holy Spirit has given to you. And second thing many other gifts through we will learn how to use these gifts that is why you know suppose you want to learn swimming you cannot learn from the book you may learn little bit theory but afterwards you have to be pushed into the water <laughs> so you may have a trainer to push into your water and then only you will learn swimming so I am the trainer. I will put you into the water of Holy Spirit. And the <laughs> you will have initially the first one or two session, you will feel a lot of difficulty. I don't know. I never had an experience of Holy Spirit speaking to me. Then somebody said, I saw a vision. Oh, you saw vision. How, how it came? It came like a thinking. <laughs> then it came like a picture. Oh, I also saw a picture. Oh, ah, that is it. Yeah. Oh, oh that is a vision. Ah, that is a vision. <laughs> so this is, we, we are not used to it, you know. So we have to learn by doing. So that is where we will sit together, we will pray for one another, three, four people, then one will get a vision, another person will get an interpretation, and when they both say this, the one for whom 
you prayed that person, yeah, yeah, that is for me. Suppose a person is telling, uh, I am seeing a vision, a, a girl is falling from a cycle. And another person say, ah, I also see a vision, a girl is in a stream of water with a cycle. And another person say, I see that girl is afraid to ride the cycle. Mm -hmm. And now, this, you have been praying for a woman, he said, and she said, that is me, when I was 10 years old, I fell down from a cycle and fallen into a stream of water, and flare after, I never used to drive cycle, because I am afraid. It's half past now. Hmm? It's half past 11 now. Ah, thank you. So, now, so these are certain examples. So now, when we are in, we are going, we are concluding here now, we are going to the Basilica of the Nock, where the great apparition place, and uh, we are participating in the pilgrim place of Mother Mary in the Nock, and let us pray in the Holy Mass today. Today is the feast of Saint John 23rd, and uh, the gospel is about deliverance. The Jesus is teaching on the gift of deliverance, so about the evil spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so people were not aware about this, so they even blamed Jesus, you are doing with Belzebul. That you are. So when we are doing with these charisms, it's not necessary everybody will appreciate you. So many people will speak of uh, bad thing about us. Mm -hmm. So the same thing you can see, people speaking bad about Jesus. So Jesus is teaching about how, what impo how is the working of the evil spirit. Even when evil spirit has driven out, it may come back again. So all this thing is today's gospel. But most important in that is, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, the finger of God is Holy Spirit. Then the kingdom of God has come. Okay, so let us now make a short prayer. Oh Lord, all what we have heard today is a preparation for the afternoon session. We will do the workshop on, on this charism. So Holy Spirit, open in us the charisms. Oh Holy Spirit, open in us the charisms. O oh, Holy Spirit, open in us the charisms. We are here. We give ourselves, Mother Mary, like you led the first apostles and the disciples on the day of Pentecost continuously in the temple. Now we are also going to be in the temple. With your presence, help us, lead us, to open the charism. Shandala Halabra. Let us praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shandala Halabra. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Anoint us, Holy Spirit. Open the charism. Open the charism. Anoint us. Particularly in the Holy Mass today. Bless us, Holy. Bless us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Amen. 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 So now, during this Holy Mass, you offer yourself. You say, Lord, I am available to you. Use me. Through, through baptism, you have called me. You have given me the three anointing, priestly, kingly, prophetic anointing. But during the Holy Mass, we receive the Epiclesis, the Holy Spirit, and in the Eucharistic Communion, we receive the Jesus completely in us, making us, and at the end of the Gospel, we say, Go. That Go means God is sending us, sending us to proclaim, to do, heal the sick, raise the dead, <laughs> cleanse the leper, cast out demons. So take that in your heart and let us be ready for it. So God bless you and you come back at 2.30 here. Then we will 
plan how long we will have to do. We make an open end because uh, we all came from far away places here. Mm -hmm. You also might have come from far away places. Mm -hmm. We be ready to utilize maximum time. Mm -hmm. Mother Mary and the apostles were nine days without going away continuously mm -hmm. in the temple. Right. Maybe we can do that also. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Okay, so go ahead. Mm -hmm.